morning everybody or afternoon wherever you live in evening evening um, today's little adventure is all about um, rotating your uh, camera let's get a camera rotating your camera during the night during exposures to get um, so you can compose your shot And get the get the right angle so you can rotate the Andromeda galaxy however way you want it. Not an easy thing to achieve if you haven't got a a nice USB, very expensive rotator. So the idea we're going to do this camera's got a little. Um, flattener attached to it unfortunate really because I can screw my filters into here and all the rest of it and then that just fits straight into the um, back of the telescope and away I go now so the first thing we're going to do is find out the circumference of this piece this nose piece effectively we know it's two inches roughly but the actual flattener is slightly bigger in my case but if you've got two inches you've got two inches so what so I'll just whip that off don't you just love squeaky noises and measure the, the diameter and this one is you want to go you can always add an extra millimeter or whatever this is saying 55 millimeters so now we need to know what the circumference is and I'm reliably informed that the circumference will be 2 pi r Woo! mathematics so what did I say 55 so in this case we're going to measure the diameter is 55 so half of 55 is I don't know. Um, 20. <laughs> I'll have to write it down. I'm useless. Oh dear. Everybody's going 25 plus 2 and a half. So we'll make it 27 and a half, yeah? So that can, we can put, if we've got the circumference equals 2 pi r. So we already know what R is, 27 and a half. So two times 27 and a half is 55. So in actual fact, we're going to go 55 times pi and we'll use 3.14. So if I say 55 times 3.14, that'll give me what the circumference of my circle is. Once we've worked that one out, we'll go to part two. <laughs> right, so we've decided that our, um, in my case, diameter is, I measured it to 174, but after rechecking, it's 180, 184. So the next stage is, we know the circumference is 2 pi r or circumference times r uh, times pi so it's very straightforward measurement calculation the next stage is to create a piece of wizardry using a theorem Thal's theorem so all we got to, all you got to do I'll do it quickly on a on a piece of paper you can use a pencil or a black mark, uh, black fine permanent marker is good. You need a pencil, a ruler. So in my case, it was 184 millimeters. So I draw a line, make a mark, start up to 184. Stop. 
try and be as accurate as you can. So that's the circumference equals that. Our next next thing to do using Mr. Thal's theorem is to draw a, an angle. Doesn't matter what the angle is. Let's put the pencil on there. A nice little angle up through there. And then measure off. Remember we said we need 360 degrees on our on our circle. Starting at six o'clock. Uh, what? Starting at twelve o'clock, right round the clock, back to twelve. Six three nine, you know the, you know how it goes. That gives us 360 degrees. So 360 divided by 12, which is a nice even number, is 30. So next stage is to measure off on this other line 12 marks. One, two, just measure off 12 points. Doesn't matter what measurement I'm using centimeter. So I'm measuring marking off 12 centimeters down through there. Now join the end of our 174, uh, sorry 184, yours would be different. Join the two ends together. Must A lot of people will remember this from school. And from that, from that point all we need to do using a da -da, set square is you need to get that dead spot on there. I you can, and it's quite a good idea. It's like just tape the ruler down because you don't want the ruler to move really. And then all you can, all you need to do now is gently slide up to your first mark, which is there. And join it up down to our original line. Do that all the way along, and that will give us our 12, 12 points. And in true Bantry Ford fashion, it will look something like that. So you'll have 12 even spaces that fit on your circumference, which you can now simply. I've started to do it on this one, is to make it, I don't know, however wide you want it. So I've, I've made it about a centimetre. And then using your set square again, take the ruler down and we'll go away. I don't think I need that again. Is, is quietly put some marks up through here. So they're nice and so you've got a grid effectively, and then write down your measurements on there. So zero. I'll turn this around; it might be easier to see. So down one side, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. You may want to do it this way round. Do it at the angle so it doesn't, you'll see what I'm going to say. 60, 90, 120, whoops, 150, 180. I'm trying to rush it but do it quietly, do it slowly. Now the next thing to do is to, um, we need to cut this out, dead accurate, but before you cut it out, it might be worth, if you've got any around, um, there was a little sample here a second ago. No, all gone. There we go. If you've got, if you've got any of the sort of thing that you cover books with, just when you cut it out cover it with that. Next stage after that, double sided tape, 
on there. Very good. So now you've got a piece of weatherproof paper with degrees all the way around it. You can see where I'm going with this. Double sided tape. Next step, we get our, our adapter and simply you can put the zero at the top, it's quite handy. But and double sided tape all the way around, neat and tidy, almost joins at the bottom, spot on nearly. This I'm using a, a flattener here, so it's slightly awkward because it's it's got a bulge on it. Um, now, next, once that's done, I'll show you on the telescope, two secs. Get our telescope and using our and on the draw tube, as you can see, I've marked. I put it's black, so I have put a, a white mark. You can use Tip X or something like that. Unfortunate, being an artist, I've got one of the things I've got is a it's a pilot. It's called Pilot Pintor, and it's a white permanent marker which is what I've used on there. By permanent, I mean you can scrape it off of your fingernail and one thing or another. So now we can see where we're going here. If we, I'll take this camera off that's on there for a sec. Now all I have to do is pop, oh blimey, I've got this half double sided. My desk is a a nice tidy mess here so pop this on line it up to my mark in this case to the zero neat and tidy now I've got a measuring system that I can use to rotate my my camera so if I'm using for example I use Nina on Nina in Nina there's a manual focusing routine which once you plate solve your image and you take an initial image um, if you highlight or switch on that module the um, rota manual rotator before the Nina will slew your scope to the target take a picture start to plate solve but before it goes off the next stage a pop-up will come in saying your picture it will take an image compare it to how your target was framed um, and then it will come up with with a dialog box saying you need to rotate your camera say 10 degrees clockwise so all we do is move it 10 degrees clockwise go back say okay it will do it again run another one and if it needs to it will tell you to move it five degrees or whatever but it's never it's there is a you know a point where a percentage point where it says okay you're within five ten percent of the target of the um, framing that's fine and you can set that yourself actually how about that I'm quite pleased with that I think I've patented the idea become a millionaire. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for looking and good luck.